today. Wow. <laughs> the amazing Leanne Atherton. Thank you, Leanne. That was just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday. I can't tell you how blessed I feel to be able to get up here on Sunday mornings and look out on your beautiful, shining faces and just feel the, the, the light and the love that's, that comes together in this room and in this community. And it just, it moves me. It moves me. I'm thinking about and praying about my lesson for this week. I, um, I had a dream earlier in the week. And the dream, uh, in the dream, it was a group of people, and the group of people, I don't remember exactly all that was going on, but one of the things that I saw and noticed that was going on is that these people were uh, exhibiting uh, something that I uh, thought was amazing. Now, to kind of put this in a little context, I have to tell you that uh, most of you probably know, or many of you know, that I'm a big science fiction fan. I love science fiction. And what I find is that a lot of the programs I like, and I also love a lot of the movies that have come out about, uh, about superheroes. I mean, I love Superman, and I love, I mean, I just love so many of them. And many of the science fiction uh, programs that are coming out today are really programs that are showing individuals that have these amazing gifts and amazing powers. And in my dream, I saw people who were able to do things with their mind. They were able to move objects with their mind, and they were able to, you know, move things around, and they were able to do healing work that was like instantly healing. And it was just amazing things that are going on. And in that, one of the group, and I don't, nothing really descriptive about this person, but came to me and said, I have to remember how that word was phrased, but he said, this person said, what have you come here to be great about? What have you come here to be great about? What have you come here to be great about? Of course, he's talking to me. And I have to be honest with you, I felt a little uncomfortable because I wasn't clear about what it was that I had come here to be great about. And I think that that's part of the real question that, that I need to ask myself, but I think it's also a question that all of us, in seeking our life purpose and what we're here to do, it's a great question to ask. What are we here to be great about? Because the reality is that you and I came into this life and into this world and to express something, to share something, to give something, to, to have an impact, to have an impact in some form, in some way. So when I'm looking up and thinking about this idea of, well, what does that mean? And how is that, you know, what, is, what does it mean to, to be great about something? And I came across a, a wonderful little story about someone who had no, no qualms basically saying, I am the greatest. I am the greatest. Muhammad Ali. You know that quote? I am the greatest. I am the greatest. Had no problems claiming that for himself. Now, I know a lot of folks, and I have to be honest with that, at times I kind of have some real issues with that because I, at times I thought he was coming from ego. But the more I really listened and looked at how he actually chose to make a difference, not only in the ring, but in the lives of young people around the world, it's easier for me to listen and hear him say this. Well, let me tell you this story. This is actually based on, supposedly a true story. He says, um, he said, uh, I'm the greatest. And on one occasion, he was flying uh, on a flight and to apparently one, to, one of his fights. And he refused to buckle his seatbelt. And the stewardess came along, the flight attendant came along and insisted, sir, I'm, you, you have to buckle your seatbelt. And he said, well, Superman don't need no seatbelt. <laughs> and the flight attendant said, yes, but Superman don't need no plane. <laughs> 
So he buckled his seatbelt. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good story. <laughs> so when I thought about this, and I, I came across a wonderful quote, and that it was from Wilma Rudolph. How many of you know who Wilma Rudolph is? Wilma Rudolph is an amazing athlete, and, and uh, I, I don't know all the things that she's accomplished, but she was an amazing athlete, and, and uh, uh, she's won all kinds of contests, and, and um, she's, she also is a, an amazing um, speaker and presenter of, in, in the potential movement. And so she said, never underestimate the power of dreams and the influence of the human spirit. We are all the same in this notion. The potential for greatness lives within each of us. The potential for greatness lives within each of us. Well, we're moving into a season that, to me, represents exactly what this is about. We're moving into a season, uh, the Christmas season, and to me, when we think about the birth of Jesus the Christ, to me, the, the whole story and the experience and the expression of Jesus the Christ coming into the world truly is about not just this one man who came in and showed the world the presence of greatness, the presence of the divine, but one who came to show us the presence of the divine that lives within the heart of each and every one of us. To me, it's really about us opening ourselves to our greater possibilities of experiencing and expressing more of our unique divine nature in, in letting us really understand that we are not separated from that amazing greatness that is God. You know, all through Scripture, and I actually, one of the things I do is I look at, think about words that I'm using, and I looked up the word greatness, and continually throughout Scripture, it talks about the greatness of God, how great God is. And I thought, well, that's really great. <laughs> But it really is an understanding that there is that which is even more significant and valuable and uplifting and positive and powerful and strong and loving and caring and compassionate. And there's a, there's a universal presence and power, and that universal presence and power is at the very essence of who and what you and I are created to be. See, we're created in the image and after the likeness of that amazing universal power that is the very essence of greatness. When I think about greatness and I think about this, I have to say I was a little uncomfortable thinking about and giving up this talk because I don't want you to give the impression that I somehow have taken on this idea that I, myself, the personality of me, is great. Um, and yet at the same time, I think it's important for every one of us to learn how to practice tapping into that part of our nature that is great. And when I thought about this, what came to me in one of my meditations is that great does not necessarily mean exceptional. Now let me say that again because I think there's, and I'll explain a little bit what I mean by that. Great does not necessarily mean exceptional. Because the word exceptional implies that it's an exception. And if we take on this idea or this thought or this feeling that somehow we are exceptional, that means that we are somehow an exception to the rule and somehow different or better than others. See, that's what the ego really uh, works with. It works with this idea, this thought that somehow our greatness, uh, to tap into our greatness, we have to be better than others. And the ego loves that because, you know, it really, you know, it's always this one upmanship. Anytime we're coming from a place where there's either this great difference between ourselves and others, that we somehow are up here, we know we're coming from our ego consciousness. But the, the opposite is true as well. Anytime that we find ourselves coming from a place where we think that we're somehow down here, 
compared to others. Bless you. Somehow that we're down here compared to others, we're coming from our ego consciousness. Do you realize that? Because the reality is when we're not coming from our ego consciousness, when we're coming from the spirit within us, from our true nature, from the divine within us, then they're really, we don't compare. We don't, the spirit doesn't compare. See, spirit knows the truth of who and what we are and honors and appreciates our individual uniqueness. Margaret Mead was a wonderful, powerful teacher uh, and one of the things she said that I always loved, she said, always remember that you are absolutely unique, just like everyone else. <laughs> and that's an important awareness. And one of the things that makes individuals great is not necessarily their differences, but their uniqueness, just like everyone else. Being unique is not the same as necessarily being greater than or, or less than. It's just simply honoring the differences. He, she went on to say on a different time, she said, if we are to achieve a richer culture, rich in contrasting values, we must recognize the whole gamut of human potentialities. And so weave a less arbitrary social fabric, one in which each diverse human gift will find a fitting place one in which each diverse human gift will find a fitting place. Well, you and I have been brought into this life, brought into this world. There's something that we have been given in our coming into this world that is here for us to, be, to share. And when I think about the different gifts, I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about the ability to move chairs around with your mind. That's fine if you can do that. I, I think it's a wonderful thing, and I have no problems with people doing that. I'm not quite at the place where I've, my belief system says that I can do that yet. I, know, I, I think it's possible. I think it's very possible for anyone to do some of the most amazing things, the most miraculous things. And I can tell you, if anyone has ever done it, it can be done by others because we all have that same possibility and potential. I believe that's really the example that Jesus Christ came to show us. In many ways, the miracles that we see that, quote, Jesus did were, just, were, were done primarily as a teaching to show us that we are not limited in the ways that we think that we are, that there's more to us, and we can open ourselves up to greater possibilities. Well, one of the things for me that, that are, are so miraculous is not just the, the great miracles that Jesus performed, but the energies and the qualities that he used to perform those miracles. And I think that, about that in terms of what Charles Fillmore refers to in, in the 12 powers of man, that every one of us has within us an amazing quality of faith. We have strength. We have power. We have wisdom. We have love. We have understanding. We have our wills. All of these divine qualities are our superpowers. And we're tapping into those superpowers in ways that allows us to have a little more compassion. Tapping into these ways that allow us to have a little more faith. Tapping into these powers that allows us to have a little more grace and understanding. These are really, truly our superpowers, allowing us to turn the other cheek when we've been hurt, to forgive. Forgiveness is one of the greatest superpowers that any of us can hold on to and, and work with because it does transform. It does heal, doesn't it? Well, I'll be honest with you, I, I feel like I'm kind of preaching to the choir in this group because I know there's some wonderful folks in this group who have developed these spiritual qualities in, in very special and unique ways. And you guys not only can move chairs around, but I know you can move mountains because I've seen you do it as a part of this community. We've done things that we didn't think were possible, and we were able to do it. We didn't know. 
We didn't know how sometimes, but we just knew it was possible. And we were willing to open ourselves to that possibility and allow something greater than our limited thoughts and beliefs about ourselves to move forward and to move us forward and to take opportunities and steps to allow spirit to work through us. Margaret Mead also said, never, never believe that a few caring people can't change the world, for indeed, that's all who ever have. That's all who ever have. And so one of the things I invite you to really think about this week, and let this be your lesson as well as mine, is the question that I received in my dream. What, ask yourself this question, what am I really here to be great about? What is my spirit calling me to step forward into? to express not necessarily my ex being exceptional, being an exception or, or, or greater than or more than someone else, but to really truly express more of the uniqueness that is in my divine nature, that I've come here to participate in and to, to share and to give. See, that's truly the real gifts of Christmas, isn't it? The real gifts of, of Christmas are, were symbolized by the gold and the myrrh and the frankincense, and they were symbolized even by the coming of, the, of, of Jesus Christ as a gift to the world. But the true gift is an awareness of that wonderful Christ nature that is within every one of us. And if we can really open our hearts even more, we'll find that we do have those kinds of superpowers. If we're willing to turn loose and let go and pray and open ourselves up to something greater, it's amazing the things that Spirit will do in our lives and for us. We've seen this in the spiritual community, and we are blessed to have a, a, a community that comes together to help us to remember who we are and who we've come here to be. We forget, don't we? That's part of the wonderful beauty of having a spiritual community is you've got people around you that are like, oh, yeah, wait a minute, that's... I remember you. No, I, I, I remember you. I know you. See, we're looking beyond the physical. We're looking beyond the personality. We're looking beyond even the, the doubts and fears that we ourselves have. And we've got people who are willing to look beyond our limited thoughts and beliefs we have about ourselves and truly know the truth. It's one of the reasons why we firm and say to each other, I behold the Christ in you. Here the light of God I see. I can see a great peace too. I can see you whole and free. I can see God's love expressed. I can see you filled with power. I can see you ever blessed. I can see Christ hour by hour. Man, if we just continue to hold that, not only for ourselves, but for each other, we become a part of transforming all of the energies that seem to be different than that. Isn't that the work that we're here to do? Well, I want to thank you all for letting me participate in this and join in this way and helping me remember who I am, because I, you know, I can forget as well, just like anyone else. And I want to thank you for coming together as a spiritual community to support each other in that knowing of our true nature and our being. And so we're going to have a little ceremony here. We have a great opportunity, a wonderful experience. We're going to move into our time of meditation, and then afterwards we're going to welcome in some new voting members into our congregation. So let's move into our meditation time. Breathing in. I relax and allow. Relax into that place within myself where the Spirit of God is lifting and inspiring. Releasing whatever is holding me back from knowing my oneness with the greatness of spirit. 
Breathing in, allowing and accepting, breathing out, releasing and letting go. Breathing in a feeling of connection and oneness and breathing out separation and fear. Breathing in wholeness and love. Breathing out doubts, limiting thoughts, releasing and allowing. As I move into this time, this space, this place of peace and oneness, just allow stillness and a silence to reverberate, observing the thoughts, the feelings, the sensations, the emotions, knowing that we have all those, but we have that we are more than our thoughts, our feelings, our sensations, our experiences. Thank you, Spirit. And thank you, divine nature within me. And so it is. Take now a nice deep breath. Let a feeling of gratitude come into your heart for knowing that there is that which is within that is continually moving us into experiencing and expressing even more of those possibilities of our Christ nature. Take another nice deep breath. Let your awareness be in this room, this time, this place. Give thanks that it is so, and it's unfolding even now. And so it is. Thank you, God. This time I'd like to ask B and Diane to come forward. Friends, we are truly blessed here today because we have two new folks who are uh, making a, a decision and a commitment to, to make this truly their spiritual home, and we're so grateful for this opportunity. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so for membership and unity in the heart of Austin, there are no requirements other than to show up and, des and a desire to know God and to understand and love and follow God's laws of being. However, for voting membership, there's an even deeper commitment that's called for and asked. And so unity offers no prescribed doctrine or creed other than to seek the truth and to follow the only commandments that Jesus gave us, that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Unity people unite so that they may more effectively minister to the needs of others and may benefit mutually through spiritual communion. We unite to work together to, to help one another. We unite to join our prayers, our thoughts, our spiritual powers for the enrichment of our own life and to bless all humankind. And in this manner, we strive to become a force for good and to make a dynamic and positive difference in Austin, Texas, and in our world. In John chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And so unity means oneness and real unity is gathering together in my name or in that Christ nature. 
Name metaphysically means nature, and we come together to see and support each other in a more fully, in more fully experiencing and expressing our own unique divine nature that Christ within him. We're a community, and the community of Christ is first individual and then collective spiritual consciousness. And the community of Christ consists of all individuals who've committed to developing the consciousness of truth, the consciousness of the Christ ideal, the consciousness of the Christ within. And second, the community of Christ is an outer activity of humankind, and we enter into that community of Christ when we understand that God is spirit, and that we are made in the image and likeness of the divine, unfolding in God's nature through the embodiment of the spiritual ideas of life and love and power, intelligence and wisdom, the ideas of God and all good, basic to true living. As we individual students of truth unite in spirit, drawn into cooperation and friendship through invisible bonds, bonds of love, of mutual interest in the principles of truth that Jesus taught and lived and proved, we strengthen one another and work together in Christ's nature. Voting membership in unity is a commitment made. It's a commitment made to God, to oneself, to one's neighbor, and to this spiritual community, to this circle. And so I invite each of you here who are already voting members to renew your commitment at this time and we welcome, as we welcome in these new voting members. First of all, I will say an affirmation of commitment, and I invite you and each of you who are already members to affirm this together with me and respond by saying, I make a commitment. I make a commitment to God expressed as, as a desire to know God and to understand and follow God's principle of being. I make a commitment. <laughs> I make a commitment to myself to love and support myself in my own spiritual growth so that I may be an instrument of God's love to others. I make a commitment. I make a commitment to love and support the spiritual growth of all those who join in the spirit of unity. I make a commitment. I make a commitment to love and support all mankind as children of God. I make a commitment. I make a commitment to love and support unity in the heart of Austin as an instrument of God's love and light in the world through my prayers, my time, my talents, and my treasure. I make a commitment. I make a commitment. That was the last one, actually. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. Diane? on behalf of this congregation and through the love, the light, and the power of the Christ Spirit. And in the name of Jesus the Christ, our way shower, our friend, our teacher, I welcome you into full membership, into unity in the heart of Austin. And we are so grateful to have you. Blessings. Thank you. Can I get a hug too? <laughs> awesome. B. Through the Spirit of God within you and within all of us in this community, and through that Christ Spirit, I welcome you into full membership, into unity in the heart of Austin. And we're so grateful for your blessings here and being a part of this. And through that divine nature of Christ within, and, the, and through the, the love and light of Jesus Christ, our way shower, our friend, our teacher, we welcome you fully with hearts open, and knowing the truth of who and what you are. And so it is. Thank you, God. Thank you, blessed spirit. All right. Will you each stand for a moment and let's bless these new voting members. We love you, we bless you, and we truly appreciate you, and we behold the Christ you are. And so it is. Amen. And be sure and give them a good unity hug before they leave here today. <laughs> Thank you so much. And if you'll be seated. Now we have another wonderful opportunity, something very special here today. And actually, I want to do this as well. I meant to do that earlier. 
I put this on as a, just simply a symbol of the understanding that it is not I, but the Spirit of God within that does the work. Okay, let me grab my script over here. So we have a great opportunity today to welcome in someone uh, into the world. <laughs> um, this is our first. Uh, this is our first spiritual baptism since I've been here at Unity in the Heart of Austin, and so it's just a very special opportunity that we're we're getting to participate in here today. And so I'd like to ask uh, Stephen Edward Myers and Jessica Renee Tucker to come forward and bring with us Serenity Carolyn Debbie Myers. And I have a feeling somebody needs a photographer. That's great. Thank you. Look at this. <laughs> Are we blessed or what? Hi, beautiful. <laughs> All right. Oh, I love the sounds. <laughs> I think this, let, let us pray. Sweet, precious spirit, we acknowledge your loving presence in this room today. We have gathered for the celebration of the spiritual baptism of Serenity Carolyn Debbie Myers, one of your very own. And we ask that you guide and direct us through this blessed day and this event. We pray this in the name and through the nature of our master teacher, our way shower, our friend, Jesus the Christ. And so it is. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Stephen, Jessica, you brought here this little one remembering that before you and before she was yours, she was his. It's your privilege to stand sponsor for her. Guard this trust well. I'd like to read to you from Mark 10, chapter 10, verse 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples re rebuked them. And when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and his put, put his hands on them and blessed them. And now realizing the love of spirit toward his child, let us pray and know that this precious spirit this precious spirit is unfolding the presence of God. This precious spirit is unfolding the presence of God. Let us increase in our awareness of that knowing. This childlike spirit that is within every one of us is unfolding the presence of God. We feel her nature with this awareness, with divine love, with divine truth, and we wholly are consecrated to knowing that truth. We bless each and every one involved in her life and see them experiencing the blessing of that. We ask that our awareness be opened, our spiritual perception be held strong as we, as we Take on this sponsorship. We hold her in the light of spirit and know the truth. This child comes to you not endowed with, uh, comes to you, excuse me, endowed with infinite possibilities of good. She comes to teach you as well as to learn from you. And today you see God's gracious approval of that trust, the trust that he's placed in you and of your acceptance of it. We affirm and know that you are worthy and well qualified to fulfill that obligation. And we encourage you and know that for yourself. And take on this sponsorship to raise this beautiful light 
that has been committed to your care for a time. And we know that as we go through this, we'll read a covenant that you are making today. And so to your child, to this beautiful light, Serenity Carolyn Debbie Myers, we pledge our love. In doing this, we seek to live our life in such a way that our footsteps in the sands of, the lo of life will lead you in ways that will result in fulfilling the divine purpose that she's come here for and that you've come here for. We pledge to you that we will look beyond appearances and to behold your indwelling Christ self and in doing, encourage you to express your perfect self through your words and actions. We will believe in your dreams and understand your doubts. We'll walk with you in your fears and laugh with, your, with you and play with you and grow with you in all your days. We commit ourselves to tell the truth to you in love and to nurture and nourish our own personal relationship with God so that you might come to know that your relationship with God, our source, is now and will always be your primary relationship. And in seeing our example, you will learn to keep your own counsel with God moment by moment. This is our covenant to you. In return for this pledge to you, we ask that you so believe in our belief in you that this belief will support you in choosing thoughts and behaviors and activities that are worthy of you and worthy of God's holy and beloved child. If this is indeed your pledge and covenant with your child, please answer, we do. We do. As you say aloud the name, the full name of your child, may your words be a prayer of wisdom and guidance. And that will you now name this child by speaking her full name? Serenity Carolyn Debbie Myers. Serenity Carolyn Debbie Myers. my great honor and privilege, little one, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. We're here to welcome this beautiful light into our spiritual family. We are blessed to hold serenity in our hearts, to pray for her, to love and support her and her parents. As a congregation, we are included in this celebration because our prayers and future involvement in her spiritual life will add immensely to the spiritual development of this beautiful one. It's been recently said that it takes a village to raise a child. And as her spiritual family her spiritual village, we're each here as caretakers of serenity to bring a, a deeper awareness of her possibilities. So may we fulfill with strength the glory of our spiritual role in her life. We join our thoughts, our sincere goodwill, asking that a mantle of love and peace may embrace her and in, that she is always open and aware of the of the spirit and the presence of God within herself. And so we've joined together in this day to celebrate serenity and this spiritual baptism. We pray for her life and know that God is with her and her unfolding light is blessing the world. We're a spiritual family and we've prayed with you and for you. We've prayed with serenity and for serenity. And we pray for ourselves to be able to hold up that light as well. And now will the congregation please rise and join with me. Serenity Carolyn Debbie Myers. Together. Serenity Carolyn Debbie Myers. We recognize you as the Spirit of God unfolding. Together, we recognize you as the Spirit of God in all. We behold your light. 
we behold your light. We give thanks for your presence in our community. We give thanks for your presence in our community. And we behold the Christ in you. And we behold the Christ in you. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, God. May I? See what great things I get to do. <laughs> I'm so blessed. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Let's be sure and give these wonderful parents a big hug and send them all our love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. Uh, thank you, brother. And let's be seated.